Very good. Percy, sit down. Thank you. Class, thank Percy for a decidedly average rendition of a terribly throwaway tune. Class? Good. So, gentlefolk, that is the descriptor for those, supposedly, who have stood before me today. To my trained, discerning eye, I see more of a rabble, uncouth plebeians, potential criminals. But that is why you are here, my dears, to learn the ways of society, of etiquette. Now, breeding, by definition, cannot be taught. It is inherited through lineage, through class, through pedigree, bloodlines. However, Manners can be taught, and they can be taught with force. I am Master Roderick, as you know, and this is my finishing school, and you are the ones who I will finish. How should you respond to questions such as this? How should you refer to me, Master Roderick? No. No, 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 no. Sir is inappropriate. I am not yet a knight. Master is how you will refer to me at all times. Do we need to go over the class rules again, really? After so many times, it's ridiculous. Very well. Rule number one, all cursing, swearing, and obscene or indiscreet language or song is banished from this room. There will be no singing unless requested to thank you and certainly no taking the lord's name in vain now this may seem difficult you are not under any circumstances to mock other students we are here to build mutual respect in each of you so therefore you respect the society which you were cursed to. That means you cannot mock Percy for his poor playing of the harpsichord, and you certainly cannot mock Montgomery for being stupid. No. The right to insult is reserved for your master. And so at all times you must be polite. There is no drinking no smoking your pipe. Do that with your parents back at home, not here, not in front of me. You are obliged to remain silent. Good. <laughs> and uh, no student without license from me, the master, should offer or direct to any other student, advice or criticism. Understood. The student must always answer the master in the affirmative. 
The correct response is yes, Master Roderick. <laughs> now, in the rare case, but you need to respond in the negative, you will say, of course, Master Roderick. Repeat after me. Yes, Master Roderick. Good. Repeat after me. Yes, Master Roderick. Perfect. Repeat after me. Yes, Master Roderick. Now, repeat after me. Of course, Master Roderick. Wonderful, wonderful. Like a chorus of seagulls. Of course, Master Roderick. Perfection. Perfection. Of course, Master Roderick. you off this once because you are ever so stupid. But if you act like this again and contravene the direct rules of the classroom, I shall slap leather around your spine, child. Good. The curricula. What will we be learning about today? Well, we will not be learning anything, for I know it all. But you, gentle folk, will be learning the three Ds of etiquette. The first D is diction. Yes, that's right, diction. The second is deportment. Deportment. Would anyone like to hazard a guess at what that means? Yes, you may speak. Yes. No. It does not mean to move to the Americas. That was humorous, though. I'll let you off this once. Deportment is carrying one's self, moving stature, poise. The final D we will be examining today is dining. I expect that you are used to eating from troughs or perhaps stealing food from the market to consume in your coal shed of a home. Well, that changes today. You will learn how to eat properly in polite society. Right. Number one. Diction. Diction is the ability to communicate. It is the cornerstone of society. Without it, we are comparable to beasts, apes, Monkeys, birds. Though birds are quite beautiful, I suppose. 
Now you are already goblins and trolls, but it is my duty as a respected member of society to mold you into humans. If you could see your faces now, you would go blind from disgust, drooling, gobsmacked, agog, like gargoyles the body for you. Diction. We will learn to master the professional tongue by examining tongue twisters. Have any of you encountered such puzzles before? They are linguistic puzzles, yes. Alliteration. Assonance. Sibilance. This increases your enunciation and also relaxes the tongue, making it more flexible, more responsive to the words that you wish to utter. You should pronounce each word loudly and with vigor, increasing the speed as you increase your accuracy. Am I clear? Am I clear? Yes or no? Yes or no who? Master. Good. We will look at three tongue twisters. The first is very simple and relies on sibilance, the repetition of an S sound. Sally sold sea shells on the sea shore. A career I would not recommend. A vocation, no doubt, born of desperation and destitution. Sally sold sea shells on the sea shore. Repeat after me clearly and with pace. Sally sold sea shells on the sea shore. Sally sold sea shells on the sea shore. Repeated. Sally on seashells on the seashore. Percy. Very good. Clap. Sally on seashells on the seashore. Very good. Repeating tongue twisters such as this will increase the dexterity of your tongue and therefore increase the stamina for which you can speak and in turn increase your vocabulary which will add to your lexicon which will allow you to converse with those who are your betters. Next tongue twister. A tutor who tooted the flute try to teach two young tutors to toot. Said the two to the tutor, it is harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot. One more time. A tutor who tooted the flute tried to teach two young tutors to toot. Said the two to the tutor, is it hard to toot, or to tutor two tutors to toot? Oh, you can't remember it. Not good enough. I shall recite the tongue twister one more time. If you can recall it, you are to answer in the affirmative. Yes. A tutor who tooted the flute tried to teach two young tutors to toot. Said the two to the tutor, 
Is it harder to toot or to tutor to tutors to toot? Clear? Repeat. Was that assonance or alliteration? Percy. Awful. It was, of course, alliteration. The repetition of a consonant. Which serves as a constant reminder of your failures. Final tongue twister. This one will really separate the folk from the gentle. Betty Potter bought some butter. Yes, but, said she, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. Butter, bitter, better butter. Will but make my batter better. Then she bought a bit of butter. Better than the bitter butter. Made a bitter better better. So it was better, Betty, butter. No, what? Betty Botter bought some butter. But, said she, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bitter better butter will but make my batter better. Then she bought a bitter better butter, and the, the bitter butter made her bitter batter better. So it was Betty Butter. Never mind about that one. Diction is important. It allows one to communicate effectively with anyone of any class. I do not mean of any social class. I mean of anyone who has class. It is your duty as gentle folk to remember the clear communication is essential for clean conversation. Next deportment. We are going to examine what I like to call the six P's. First P is personality, which I am afraid most of you are lacking in. Mental poise with an appearance of ease. One must convey oneself to convey the character that you wish to be recognized for. Whether that be someone of class, someone of grace, or someone of intelligence, or someone of importance. One should always communicate the personality that you want the world to see. Yes. Politeness. I shouldn't need to say it, but here we are. Conversations and apology. Conversational maxims, quantity, quality, necessity. Does one really need to say all of that when one could just say yes? Apologies. We are a nation of those wishing to acquiesce right on our wrongs, conduct acts of contrition. But it's not always right to apologize. And if one does it too much, one can look weak, as if one has failed oneself. Apologize only when absolutely necessary. That is correct. Whenever possible, but only when necessary. Otherwise, politeness is key to acceptance. If you are rude, you'll be asked to leave. And once you've left, you may never return. You will be killed, socially speaking. Presentation. Dress as though you are dining with King George himself. 
dress as though you are going to high tea with a cat. Dress as though I will kill you when you wake up in the morning. What I mean by this, dress as you would to die. It could be one's last day on this planet. If you go, you want to look your best for God. He is very stylish. And of course, you will not want to embarrass yourself by leaving behind an unattractive, unstylish corpse. Dress as well as you can all the time. I sleep in my wig. Oh, I have a full head of hair. Darling, fool. Poise, balance, and grace. Yes. No, they're not the two neighbors who live down the street. They are how you conduct yourself. A straight back as straight as possible, aligned with the head, yes, your chin should either be in the middle or slightly raised, depending on the circumstance and depending on who you are with, your chest, whatever your gender, out straight, yes, look as tall as you can, as if a piece of string is pulling you on. Align your head to your buttocks and you will never go wrong. Chest out, shoulders back. And of course, your stomach should be held. Gout is commonality, unfortunately, at the moment. And we must all combat it. In that case, when one puts one's chest out, one should pull one's tummy in. Yes. Shoulders back. Arms down to the side. It's difficult to know what to do with your arms. I appreciate that. The devil makes work for idle idiots. So, put them by your side. If you are in a subservient setting, hold them before you. Holding them up means that you are concealing no weapons. Therefore, you are no menace, you are no threat, and you are welcome down by your sides, with access to no concealed weapons, does the same. Now, if you must, hold your hands behind your back, but this is only to be done after first meeting your colleague. Otherwise, it looks distrustful and very left-handed. Understood? Finally, your legs should be roughly hip wide, mm -hmm. a dignified amount apart. Your gait should be no wider than what lies beyond it, if you understand what I'm saying. With that in mind, ultimately your poise should be thus. All of you up, show me your voice. Good, very good, yes, wonderful. Stay standing. The next P is perambulation. Does anyone happen to know what that means? Don't test my patience. Walking. The way one glides through society, shows one's station, shows one's level of importance, shows one's basic understanding of how society works. Your upper torso should remain static. Sudden movements or slouching can look sloppy and peasantry. You should remain strong, focused from the stem your head, just as your poise, elevate it slightly 
so that one can look down where necessary on the plebs before. You need to use legato movements. It's Italian. It doesn't mean legs. Legato. Smooth and slow. There should be no excess waving at the arms like a dandy. Keep them by one side, where possible, perhaps behind the back, as if escorting a gentleman or a gentle person down a canal. And of course, this low tempo ensures that you only perambulate as quickly as the slowest person in your group, no faster. High society is not a race, because if you're part of it, you've already won. Understood? Good. Now, sit back down. Very good. The final P is planting. Not planting a seed, or a flower, or a plant, but sitting. Everything you have learned from poise to perambulation should be replicated in planting. One should sit with purpose. Shoulders back, chest out, head elevated slightly. Yes? Try not to turn your head if at all possible, simply look with your eyes, yes, and that is all you need to do. And when you sit, do not slouch, and sit as still as possible, Percy. Good. And those are the six P's of deportment. I'm pleasantly surprised with your progress so far. Yes, you are all doing rather well. It makes Master Roderick very happy. Is that a good thing? Yes, Master Roderick, yes it is. Good. The final part of today's lesson is dining. Dining and understanding the basic etiquette of food consumption is possibly the most important part of being part of high society. If somehow in the future, in some bizarre, awful form of reality where you are invited to a dinner party, there are rules, strict rules. Wait for your host to seat you. All right? You don't just burst in, smash the door down, and plump yourself down wherever you find something. Right? You wait. No matter how long it takes, you walk into the room, polite, stand, poised, and when you're addressed, you smile, thank your host, and take your seat. Do not seat yourself. Can anyone tell me where the head of the table is located? Yes, it is at the top of the table. But often people get confused. The head of the table is indeed one end of the table, the end that faces the door. This is so. The master of the house can see all who enter. There are no threats, and also can eject people should he wish. With that in mind, never begin eating before the host. It sounds simple. Even if you're ravished, even if you're starving, even if you haven't eaten for two months. You wait for the host, yes, and you also eat at pace with your host. This is rule number three. 
Never finish before the host. Eat at pace and match where possible. Even if you're hungry, Percy. Three. Yes? Rule number four. Offer to your left and pass to your right. This ensures a continuous motion of food, receptacles, drinks. If you go against this, it will ruin the party, as people will become confused, possibly ending in violence. Speaking of, rule number five, salt and pepper are married. They are formed an unbreakable union and should never be struck apart. When you are asked to pass the salt and pepper, then of course you pass to the right. You pass them together. They are never to be separated. Yes? Use silverware from the outside in. Typically you will be presented with a number of utensils to use to consume. To make it simple for those of you who perhaps don't dine very often, one should work one's way in from the starter all the way into the dessert. Soup spoon at the front and different drink receptacles. Yes. Wonderful. Used silverware never touches the table. Understood? Leave it on the plane. Napkins. Napkins remain on one's lap. If you must be excused from the table, do not take the napkin with you. Simply fold it and place it on your chair. This indicates that you will return. Yes? Of course, one must excuse verbally before doing so at the behest of the host and certainly not interrupting the conversation understood good speaking of which no elbows on the table it is imperative that you never put your elbows on the table it's a sign of disrespect it's unclean who knows where your elbows have been never chew with your mouth open and do not slurp your soup. You are not a dog, though you may look like one Clive. You are gentle folk. Gentle folk do not chew with their mouths open or slurp their soup. Is that all clear? Wonderful. That concludes today's lesson. I hope that you have found this helpful, because I do not tell you these things to be helpful. I tell you these things to save you. Imagine if Jolly King George came in here now, saw you like this. He have a lot of you hung, drawn. Treason. Bad manners are treasonous. Where I'm from, Kent, we kill the rude. But that's in the past. Now, would you like to thank me for the knowledge, the wisdom? that I have bestowed upon you. Yes, Master Wolverine. Well, say it then. Wonderful. Wonderful. You are all excused. Very well. I didn't know better. I would say you were 
already a member of high society. But you can always do better. Do not forget your P's and Q's. Pleases and thank yous. I know thank you isn't spelt with a Q. I wrote the English language. Get out of my good books. Bugger off. Take care. Let's see the next rabble.